Today, we're going to go over some games. Let's take a look at some situations that happened today. First of all, I want to go over this very quickly, this game that Ari and Tari played against Yesipenko. Yesipenko had been tearing up the tournament. Just like, woo! I mean, who? When he hit Magnus, it was like, boom! Hit him hard. Like, whoa! Yesipenko got it done. But, 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 hey, hey, hey. Never get cocky in chess because you sometimes, you eat the bear and sometimes the bear eats you you don't know what was up all right in this event right here so Ariantari with the white pieces thank you very much how does this even work well we're going to show you Ariantari with the white pieces and Andre Yesipenko with the black pieces in this game and this is how it went down it started off with a nice little Rui Lopez little Rui and then you play the d6 oh, solid type Steinitz type Smyslaw variation, just be solid in the position. White plays for castles and D4, of course, going for it. Thank you so much, Induced, for making that happen. Thank you. As we see, the height train is about to begin. All right, well, D4, Bishop G7. This Fianchetto system does give white space. And the beauty of the system is it can transpose, as far as white is concerned, into a King's Indian type setup. So white will dictate when that happens if black doesn't take on d4. You'll see what I mean because that's exactly where the position goes. So we're seeing all kinds of moves here. And now this takes. And now this nice maneuver with the knight. We always see the knight go back to f1 in the Royal Lopez and head to the key d5 square. But you got to admit, this knight on f4 is a bit annoying. White will have to challenge that. And we have the kind of formation in the exchange kid where black plays for f5 after white has captured it's a little tricky for black to play that with the king on g8. So king to h8, trying to maybe prepare it for later. But now knight d5 challenging this knight. As you see here, this bishop is on the knight as this piece as well. So the knight dropped back to e6. And these knights are very strange in this formation. It's, they don't, they're not sitting on natural squares. The reason why this square is not as natural in the king's Indian, this pawn is on c4 normally. All right, this pawn goes to c4 on move two. That gives the e uh, the d4 square for this e6 knight. Also for this c6 knight. So there it makes a lot of sense. But if you leave the pawn on c3, you're telling these knights, where are you stepping to? You're stepping to nowhere at all. So I'm going to try some other things. And now this idea of f5 is possible, so white plays h4. I really like this move. A little massage move. You never know what h5 might happen and break up the team over here. Black has to be really careful. And... We've seen this alpha zero style, h5 type move, h4, h5 going down the board. So black played a move that was very committal right now, the move h5. I've played these types of structures before. I might show you a game. I prepared a game for you to show you what happens when you play for f5 after you've already played the move h5. Bad things can happen. Bad things can happen. Very instructive moment here. Because now that h5 is on the board, f5 loses some of its flexibility. It, it, it just the looseness of the position after a move like f5. So now, no problem, bishop to e3, daring him to play f5. Remember, the queen is sitting here. So you can't really take without worrying about this knight jumping and the queen showing up along this diagonal. So f5 feels loosey-goosey right about now. So black decided to chill with f6. But the moment you see this, you go, I don't know. There's a knight on d5 you need to chase. There's a bishop sitting on a strong square. c6 won't happen anytime soon with the b6 square weak to pieces. I like white. You got to like white here. White has a very harmonious position and decided harmony, harmony, time to start maybe a potential assault. Knight to e7. All right, no problem. Let me just shift my queen off this line. And now knight to c8. I've seen this kind of maneuver before. It usually doesn't end well for black. Now c4, and this c4 move, basically, he wants to be ready for this c6 move to be able to drop his knight back as needed, and that's why now. But now this knight would have to march all the way back over to get to the d4 square. So black has made a lot of moves, white still improving the position. Queen to e8, that kind of defends against the h5 move, but no me gusta. This is not a move I really like. And now a5, a3. Knight to a7. Black is playing the best he can right now, trying to slow up anything that's happening on this side of the board. But you can see 
the harmony in Black's position is weird. It's just weird. I mean, it, it just looks funny. And by the way, the idea of trading on D5 earlier, having a pawn land here and open up the diagonal was not something Black wanted to do. So bishop to b3, knight b5, and now bishop to c4, repositioning the diagonal in the suite, no question, and a double dose of a diagonal here as well. So black, nothing special going on at the moment, but black has to watch out as white is improving and improving. Now, I'm going to say black's not doing miserably, and maybe black has even crawled back and got some good squares. But now to find, thank you, Curious Chimpanzee, much appreciated. Now to find this move, C6 and Knight B6, you know, nobody wants to play chess like that, even if it's good. <laughs> I mean, even if it's good. The engines say that's a good way to go. Nobody trusts this position, but he had to stay solid, dear Sapenko. What is a rule of chess? I'm going to give you one of the very important principles in chess. When your opponent has space, when they're the ones who, has the, who have the more active pieces, be careful how you open up the game. Be very, very careful. Did I call that a rule? I hate calling things rules when they're really more like guidelines, rules of thumb, okay? Print general principles. In general, when your opponent has space, what you want to do is trade off a few pieces, get rid of a few babies before you open up the game because your opponent themselves have been looking to open up the game. They want to bust it open, please, because their pieces are so active. You shouldn't be the one to open up the game to help out their pieces. And in this position, that rule was broken with the move F5. Trying to open up a position when he is the one with less space. I know it's a thematic move. I know it's a thematic move, y'all. But, yo, mm, <laughs> it's going to get punished. Give me that. Let's open the position. Pawns hitting the knight. And now G takes F5. He didn't want to give away the E4 square. Rook takes looks terrible in that position. But now G takes F5. And now Black is thinking, I got some funky tactics. I can play this move and hit the bishop. Maybe I play E4 and, and smack the rook. You know, I got ideas. I got ideas. You're going to die. That's what's going to happen. Sorry, I, I hate to say it. But you weakened the position, did Black, and now White. Goals for the juggler. Thanks for opening up the game, he said. And now knight to g5 and check this pawn out. Just look at it. Well, I got that cover. I got that covered. Watch very carefully what's about to happen. Knight to g5. And now takes and takes. And f4. Whoops. I gave away the story. I gave away the story, y'all. Press the wrong button. F4 was played, and you see what's coming because I told you about H5. I told you about the square, and white dropped the bomb. Rook to A8. That was the preview, and whoop, we flick it in there now for you to see it. Rook to A8. All right, Rook to A8. J2X uh, Zendar, you're funny. Maybe you haven't watched me before. You don't know. When I'm trying to fly through these positions, I usually don't peep the messages too much because... It would take forever for me to go over the games. So I want to make sure that I give good shrift to the games. No question about it. But I know you're probably new to the stream. But check me out. You'll know I do read the stream all the time, the chat. But right now, we're slowing up the action, folks. We're slowing up the action. Let's get back to it. Rook to A8 on the board, hitting the queen. And this was a killer move. Rook to A8, smacking the queen. The queen is guarding this pawn and also guarding this knight through the bishop. Look at that power on the knight. That was a bomb on the chessboard. Nice move. Rook to A8. You got to let That's skills. Whoop. You know Arian Tari, when he put that move down, he was like, oh, that feels good. <laughs> when you make a move like, oh, that feels good. <laughs> Drop Rook A8 on the board. Queen to G6. Now trying to hustle. You know, he's got a tempo on the bishop. But after the trade, the very quiet, subtle, simple retreat, bishop back to d2, and it's deadly, and it's over. Yes, it's over. That knight's hanging. That pawn's hanging. You ain't got much to do right now. You losing material in this position. 
You might say, well, does he have tactics? Maybe take on G5 and then fork the pieces? Maybe, maybe could be. Eh, eh. Nope, nope, nope. You're still pinned. You can't take the knight. Not going to happen. You're dead. Bishop to D2, a beastie move. And now the move, knight to A3, hitting the bishop, saying, please take the pawn so I can play bishop G7. By the way, this is playable as well. I mean, he could play like this if he wanted to, just take this pawn. We have the second pawn. He could do that. But he saw another move that was even sweeter. He said, let me back up. Back, back, back it up. Hitting the pawn on E5, hitting the queen as well. And when the queen took on G5 to defend the pawn, queen to E4. Mm. Mm. all of us know what time of day this is i mean all of us know that this is done if you drop the queen back to defend yes your queen's guarding and it's guarding but who's guarding this one as everybody is strung out bishop cannot go to d6 because of the pawn knight can't come back it's trapped on the side of the board bishop e5 is coming knock knock here's johnny and that was that's it that's the game that's it. Over Rover. Yes, a Penko goes down. I mean, I was giving him a chance to win this tournament. Not after this game. Not after this game. Indeed, it's done. What a killer game here. Uh, couldn't he play Queen H6? Remember, the Queen came back to guard the E5 pawn. So Queen H6 would have dropped everybody. And I mean everybody. So that would have been that. Now we're asking some questions. After Rook to A8, why didn't you take the rook? Rewind. Rook to a8. Why not take the rook? Mm, I, I don't want to show variations like this. Mm. Whew. <laughs> Woo. Oh, man. There's light. And the light is blinding. Mm. Which discovery do you want? Which one? Ooh, 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 ooh. Pick me, pick me, pick me. Hit the queen. <laughs> Hit the queen. Which discovery? Wait, wait, pick me, pick me. Which one do you want? <laughs> pick me. Oh my goodness. Woo. Hey, woo. Please don't. Please don't have him. If I had to play a move like this, take the rook and go down like this in flames. Mm -mm, you could take my left pinky. Sorry. Uh-uh. This is a horrible. No, please don't do nothing. I mean, he literally he could play any move he wants. Even knight takes would get it done. I mean, any knight move. Just <laughs> just me. Just pick this, throw the knight away. Wherever you want to put it. I know it's mate. It's, I know it's mate two ways. I know it's a queen two ways. I know you can snap upon. You can retreat if you want to. Could I go to E3? I just want to go anywhere. <laughs> like, woo. Woo. Anybody. Anybody. Pick one. It's over. So no way you're taking the rook. Like we said, it's just too, too ugly for us to show <laughs> that variation, y'all. That would have been nasty. There was another variation we had talked about. Uh, Bishop D3. A queen takes and queen e4. What? Oh, I didn't say queen e5 now. My hand. <laughs> no, don't do that. Queen a8, six. Uh, queen e4, queen to a8, six. That's cheese, y'all. That's called cheese. You know what? I, I, no, no, fava beans. Fava beans with a touch of Chianti. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Also, Bishop C3 and boom, just boom. Just boom. And him again, boom. This was a beat down, y'all. A pure D absolute beat down. I'm sorry, Esipenko. You did it to Magnus, but it got done to you in this game. No question about it. All right. So, Ariane Tari. Just fixing his score a little bit. Just pad the score. <laughs> Get me some points back. Thank you. And Norway is like, thank you, young man. You did a service to the community. Good, good to you for your country. That's right. That's how you do it. Magnus gets hit. You hit him back. You hit him for Magnus. Good job. All right. Now, the next game we're going to take a quick look at is this one. Von Faris against... Hari Krishna and Pentala Hari Krishna, the pride of India, not doing well in this event. Induce, thanks so much for the gift of five tier one subs. Absolutely very generous of you. Now, this one's strange. You want to know what strange this is? I'm not going to go over the whole game. I'm just going to go over the opening because I'm confused. 
Yes, I'm not Confucius. I'm confused. All right. Please tell me what the heck happened in this position because right here, everything is looking cool. We got a little Joko piano going on and no problem, man, no problem. And now this move gets played. Rookie two, a little King H8 action. All this is simple. Develop pieces, put a little pressure here. Move the, pit, the, the king out of the way so that you can play an F5 move. H3 chasing the knight. F5. And now D4. This one of them sharp opening lines. Super sharp. E takes D4. And now H takes G4. Now, I, I, I mean, I'm just a lowly chess player, okay? I'm just a lowly chess player. But black just sacrifice a piece. And it seems to me that takes it just looks like the best move. I mean, yes, that's going to happen. Uh, this could happen to just keep it sharp. All right. Thank you, ZX Max. Much appreciated. This looks like something on the sharp side. Okay. Because now you're threatening to take and then take back with the bishop. You're opening up the king. I'm just saying that looks interesting. D3, some theory I don't know. Because now, after knight D4, G3 in this position can now be very easily met. And are there more tactics here? Like, what's the deal? I mean, he went down after this. He was just down a piece for zero reason and just went down. Matter of fact, let's just go right to it. Because in the game, instead of this, this position happened. Knight to f1, guarding g3 square, and then queen f6, queen c2, shoring up f2, and then after c5, what's that about? Like, that's just out of nowhere. Bishop e3, and that's it. Everything shut down. That's it. That's it. He went on to win up a piece. 19 moves in? Pentala Hare Krishna with no compensation. 19 moves in against a much lower-rated player right from the opening? The guy's having a bad tournament. I mean, Holland is like this. The Netherlands is like this. But India's got to be wondering what's going on with their, their man right now. What's going on that he's not... I mean, this, this is how you and I would play against Von Feriest, all right? You and I... And maybe we might not even be down a piece, right? Because I'm not playing some wide line. I'm just sacking. I don't even know what to do. Here, I'm sacking a piece. And... Uh, oh, wait, why am I sacking a piece? I don't know. Why, why am I down a piece? Like, <laughs> I mean, let Jordan take me into some middle game and, you know, I'll play me. Maybe take me into an end game and do to do. But why am I giving you a piece from the opening? I don't even know what's going on. That's, I'm sorry, strange. That's all I can say. Strange. This one is hard to believe. All right? I mean, you know, when Michael Jordan... Well, maybe some of you are too young to remember. Michael Jordan hits a shot against Portland in the NBA Finals. And he's just dropping shots from every angle. When he hits a three from way out, he runs back up court. And he does one of these. He's like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. They're just going in. <laughs> Everything I shoot is just going in. What can I do? That's what Jordan did. Jordan was like, I don't know. The guy gave me a piece. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> like, they just handed me a piece. Let me just let me just win the game. Why not? I mean, thank you very much. You know, we can jump to the end, y'all, because the game itself, I'm not going to show y'all a piece down position. The game itself, he gave it back for overwhelming, say goodnight, <laughs> overwhelming position as F5 is coming after the king goes into the corner. I mean, what am I supposed to do? The guy gives me stuff, I beat him down. I mean, thanks for the gift. So we won't talk about this game any further. The next game we'll look at, though, oh, my goodness, this crazy, if this game was crazy, and I got to say, Fabi mm, had the young man, as far as I could tell, Fabi backed down, blinked twice in this game. Let's get right to it. Another E4, E5 battle, and these players are playing the old classical Joko pianos that were, if, if Paul Morphy came back. Anderson came back. Steinitz, the ghost of the 19th century. They look at this and go, what do you mean? Theory hasn't improved in 150 plus years? Like, this is, this is the 21st century. They're playing this stuff. We were playing this in 1850, literally. I'm not even exaggerating. 
1850, they were playing this stuff. And they'd be like, oh, let me in there. More would be like, let me in there. Who's, who's the top player right now? Let me in there. They're playing this stuff? I thought there'd be like some new discoveries. Well, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Let's make it happen. Like, huh, I'm ready to swing, okay? If you're going to play this kind of theory, let's go. I mean, it's amazing how theory, what is old, is well forgotten, and then it's old wine in new bottles. I mean, I'm, I'm just dropping proverbs. I don't even know what I'm talking about. But you know what I'm saying. I mean, what the heck is going on right now? Knight of six, D3. If you're going to play like this, of course, the ghosts of all the legends, lots of, put, pick me. <laughs> pick me, Alakine. Pick me. That's what I would kind of be like. Pick me. Thank you, Induce, for the gift. Guys like Tarish, even Tarish, never became world champion. Be like, this looks very um, simple. Is this modern chess? What are you guys? What are you guys doing different? And then you have to show them all the Indian, you know, Kings Indian, Nimzo Indian, and they'd be like, oh, ooh, okay, that's different. <laughs> Benoni's, Benoni's supposed to be bad. Oh, what? What are these things? Um, Start dropping some Burgosian variations and stuff. Oh, that's what's happened. Okay, let's not play any of those openings. Let's stick to this, okay? Let's stick to the classical, tried and true, basic stuff. You move like H6. You know, when a beginner plays that move, you go, you know, you're wasting time. When Fabi plays it, you go, oh, he's trying to stop something from going to G5. <laughs> and by the way, in the modern era, they also play G5 themselves. That's another story. Didn't happen in this game. Bishop back to B6, A4, A5. Okay, bishop to b5. Little pressure on the knight. Little tiny, teeny, teeny, teeny. No problem. Nobody cares. Okay, and now knight back to e7. And now d4. And we see the expansion. Here we go. Come on. We're going to try to do this. But black's like, I'm not afraid of you. Look at this control, control, control. Okay. No problem here for black. None at all. And also... I'm ready to park on F4. We've seen a night like that before. So he said, all right, that's it. Let me just back up, control everything, boom. And now we see the flaw to this move, bishop to B5, a move I, I wasn't a fan of, but modern chess plays all kinds of strange things that old geezers like me and we're like, I don't know, that move looks weird. Boom, D5, let's open it up and get the fight started. In E4, E5 openings, E4, E5, we're talking for move one, E4, E5. In E4, E5 openings, it is a truism that if black can play the move D5 and not get smoked, thank you, Slice Serve. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. The kind words, especially. Let me let me know. The gift was well, the gift was really nice, but the kind words, I really appreciate that. If black can play the move D5 in the E4, E5 openings. And not get smoked. Like, you play D5. Punish time. If white looks, and where's the punishment? No punishment? Then black's fine. Black's good. Because that's what black is aiming for. Is to break out with D5 without white having any kind of space. When I, when I say any kind of space, this is what I mean. Sometimes black might do this. And then white will say, eh, no trade for you. No, 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 thank you. We're going to control this square. And what's your knight doing? Does it have a home? Is it going back? It, it looks stuck. H3 is true. Hello, here comes H3. Oh, no, not looking good. This is terrible for black, all right? Black doesn't want to play D5 when something like E5 can squeeze. But if black can play D5, there's no E5. You're looking around. Where's the E5 break? There's no E5. There's no push. Black, black's like, I got this. I got this. Let's go. So Fabi's doing good here. Takes, takes. We'll take this later. We'll take that on the next move. H3. I got a way back. Knight takes. Give me that. You look at the board, you go, this is good for black. Well, what's the problem? Black's piece, I mean, this, black's pieces are more active than white's. These two are mirroring each other. This knight's not superior to this one. That's for sure. This knight's doing well. This bishop on the long diagonal is doing work. This bishop, not so much. This guy's going to come into the game. Queen's ready to jump. It's all good. White's not saying anything at all. Thank you from Turkey. Much appreciated, Panston. Panston from Turkey. 
I just I got just mate in 13 moves. Ashley's lessons are paying off. I hope so. Yeah, I hope you for real, programmer Dan. Much uh, I hope the lessons are, are taking. That's what I'm all about on this stream. Now, night at four, one of them is coming. Rookie one. Now you see, when you see moves like this, you say the young gun, Ali Reza. He's 17 still. He's 17. He's not quite there yet. He allowed D5, and he also played rook back to E1. Losing a tempo. I mean, <laughs> Fabi's like, okay, that's it. I'm still going there. I'm just going to park. I'm going to park. Now I'm going to chase you. Get out of the position. And now I'm going to shift. Whoop. New diagonal. Alert, alert. Watch out. Doesn't look like mate. Don't look like a problem over there. But now there are no tricks along this diagonal, so that means that the queen can move when it wants to. There's not going to be any kind of sidestep that hits the bishop on b6. So bishop to c7, just securing it on a sweet diagonal and re-emphasizing the power of this knight on f4. That knight's not leaving unless you ask him to. Period. All right? So now, knight to g3, good move. Let's get the knight in. Let's get the knight in. White's just about organized, it looks like. And now Fabi had a shot that would have been heard around at least the Netherlands. But yeah, the rest of the world, it would have made it across the ocean if Fabi in this position had dared to play. Boom! Knight takes on G2. With everybody lined up, gangsters, criminals, hoodlums, everybody lined up, a queen about to appear. Fabi didn't play knight takes g2. Well, you say, wait, what's the deal? What's the deal? Why, how, why can you take back? Because guess who's showing up to dinner? Hello, the big dog. The queen would be in a position threatening na nos nosties, okay? that That's what we call scary. Sca like, now suddenly you have to defend a position. And I say, well, you know, I got a nice little rook h1 action. What's the problem? What's the problem? The problem is the queen is attacking through this knight. We can drop a little c5 action on you. Move your knight and give us your light square bishop. You thought he was attacking h3, right? Everybody had the eye. Oh, let's look. It's h3. It's all about h3. Uh-uh. That queen is flexible all the way through the rank. c5. Now your king position is shattered. And you might have to give up this knight because you don't want to give up this bishop. Be very careful that this bishop doesn't show up on this diagonal, by the way, someday, somehow, and start doing work as well. So if rook h1 is not a move, let's be clear. If rook h1 is not a move, if the knight can't go to f5 because we're going to chop it, let's just do it. Knight f5, block that up. Well, wait a minute. That's the wrong knight because I can just take immediately. So let's try the other knight, this knight to f5. Now, if you're going to do this, we're going to chop this off, and then we're going to... Food. Now, like, where's the danger? Uh, where's the problem? Like, black, this king is ugly. There's always going to be a little check in case of or There's no attack. There's no forky-worky. Like, where's the danger? The answer is, there is no danger. That's the answer. There is no danger. So you can't play that way. So how do you play? Well, one critical line is bishop f1. We've got to look at bishop f1. Save the bishop and try to cover the king. Let's block. Let's block. Let's cover him. He's after us. He is after us right now. Yes, he is. Bishop takes on h3. That's dos peones. Okay? Two pawns. All right? And the king is being flushed out. And where do you go? You can't go to h2 because give me this guy with, this, with a little disco action. So what do you do here? You back up. You're not going up the board. We're not analyzing that. We're just not. We're just not. If you expect us to analyze it, we're not. Okay, queen g4 mate. But anyway, we're not analyzing that, okay? So, in this position, more food. Let's make it happen, captain. Here we come. Knight f3. Let's give him the best move to try to defend. Queen g4. Takes, takes. That's tres peor. No, dos, dos. But you have to take. So, it's going to be three. Three pawns now. Three pawns. And a king that looks terrible. Now, this position, Fabi might have analyzed and said, I don't know. Is this enough? 
Is this good enough? I don't know if it's good enough. Is it good enough? Should, do, should I do it? Is it bad? No, Fabi. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hello. Come on. Here we go. Come on. Bring the, bring the big dogs into the game. Bring the big dog. Potentially everybody. Every, look at this king. How do you guys feel with your king being attacked like this? Buck naked. Nothing around it anymore. I don't know. Fabi didn't like this position. Somehow his calculations or whatever. You, you know, he's got the 2,800 assessments. So I, who am I to argue? I'm just a lowly commentator with an engine <laughs> that can help me look at the position, all right? And with people like Peter Laco breaking it down. And I don't know. I don't know. You, you just, but in the middle of the game, it's a different story. So Fabi, instead of sacrificing on G2 like that, decided to play knight back to D5. That's called blinking the first time. That was blinking the first time. Okay, Fabi. Okay. I'm, I'm feeling you. I mean, a little bit strange that you did that. Playing positional, going after the bishop. Mm, okay, no, you can't have it. White suddenly, I'm going to tell you straight up. Tall would have been, bing, <laughs> knight g2. You would have, I'm going to show you how it would have worked. This is how the game would have gone. Tall would have been eyeballing knight g2. You would have played knight g3. Your hand would have let go of the piece. And when you were reaching for the clock, Tall would have said, boom, just give me the pawn. <laughs> is he couldn't even help himself he, he, he had, like like his chess pieces are on crack you know like gotta take i can't help it <laughs> why'd you take i don't I, something made me take i just had to i had to <laughs> okay he had to take on g2 like just do it just go for it but more conservative fabi play knight back bishop d2 queen d6 trying to get a little angle Nothing really going on, though. He's safe. He's cool. Bishop d7. And now the game slows down a little, a little, little, little bit. Okay, so now let's jump ahead as the knight is now returned to f4. Trades, queen f6. Nothing doing. Nothing doing. Rook d8. And now this, you know, you start, you, this move right here. This move, rooks don't really belong in the middle of the board. Let's be clear. When a rook goes up, it wants to go over, up and over. Jennifer Shadi calls it a rover. That's what they call it in the Philly. Rook up and over, the rover. When a rook goes up, it goes over. It doesn't need to be in the center because we know geometrically rooks do not get more mobility by being in the middle of the board. No matter where a rook is, on an empty board, a rook controls 14 squares. So a rook doesn't get more mobility by physically sitting in the middle knights can get more mobility by being in the middle queens achieve maximum mobility even bishops in the middle get more mobility rooks don't so when you put a rook in the middle you better have an amazing reason for it and this rook to e4 y'all what's the point it's not like another rook is coming to help out along the line it's not like it puts more pressure on this piece is there a little, you know, is he trying for some tactical, like everybody who's going to replace this piece is going to be a, a forking piece or what? Mm, I don't know. And then on top of it, you allow a move like queen of g6. And now, okay, it's not really pinned because this knight is guarding, this bishop is guarding. But you start seeing something, I don't know. There's some things happening down here. This knight is feeling some... Some far off pressure. Could he come up with a tactic and hit me with something? I, I don't know. You know, you start feeling it. You start worrying a little bit. You start worrying. And Ferruja worried enough that he played Bishop takes D5. The Ruy Lopez Bishop? The, the Bishop on the long diagonal? I admit this knight was, not this knight, but the knight on D5 was really a pain in the neck. But your light squared bishop, weaken all the light squares? Now we know. Now we know, no. I take, now Fabi's got to be like, oh, no. You gave me a, some B hop you just gave me. For what purpose? To play tactics. The young man is playing tactics. Now, tactics spring from a better position. 
when you're worse, tactics usually means you're going to get served. Okay? You can't just start playing wild chess when you're worse. And so this move was a part of his plan, but it's a, not a good plan. <laughs> it's not a good plan, all right? And, but he did see, but he did see something amazing that had to be refuted by something even more amazing. What is this, Jimster? Rooks in the middle equal a pile of piddle. You're a poet and you don't know it? What's up with the what? <laughs> What's up with the what? What is that? That's cool. Rooks in the middle equals a pile of piddle. The rest of us are trying to look, look at what piddle means, but we know it must, it must mean something bad, okay? Piddle and puddle and all of that. Uh, yeah, something's up with that. So Fabi now realized the threat is rook to g4, and the kid's got tricks. If you try to steal a piece, whoop, the kid's got tricks. See, he's not playing, not playing positional chess. He's playing tacticos, tacticos. You can order that at your next Mexican restaurant, okay? Because those guys can play, and those ladies can play. Shout out to my girl Yvette, who rocks it on the stream. Now, it's cockney, okay? It's cockney, whatever it is, whatever it is. Uh, it's good. I like it. Rooks in the middle equal to pot of piddle. I like that. I like that. Now, the thing about the braggadociousness of Ali Reza's move, giving up the light square bishop, bringing the rook to the e4 square, playing a knight to f5, all the moves are counterintuitive. Count all three moves and say, none of those moves made any quick sense. Like, think about it. Think about it. Right here, the move rook e4. What are you doing? Like, what are you doing? You're putting your rook in the middle. I'm just going to play a nice little move. Bishop d5. What are you doing? I'm not going to isolate my pawn because you're defended still, so I'm not going to do that. But what are you doing? Like, what, what are you doing if I just play knight takes? Now knight gf5, and you go, oh, interesting. <laughs> Hanging the knight, loosey-goosey. Something looks wrong. But it looks like you're trying to make this work. <laughs> the kid is creative. Let's call him creative. But Fabi could have made him pay. Queen to f6. And now rook g4. And now the whole plan that White has played has come together beautifully, it looks like. Beautifully, gorgeously. Thank you, Dat Mud. What, what, what is that? Dat Mud is Zucker? Dat Mud is Zucker. That might have sucked. <laughs> that might have, okay, okay. Thank you very much, nevertheless. Now, rook to g4. Threatening g7 in a straight way. Incredible sequence of moves by white. It looks like an incredible sequence of moves. Positionally unfounded. Rook's not supposed to come up. Giving your your light square bishop, bad idea. Your knight is loosey-goosey on f5. All of it unfounded, positionally. But the winning move right now, when genius creative play like Ali Reza comes at you, even Fabi is like, um, mm, um, mm, I, I don't know. This looks, this looks amazing. And missed a win right now. I was thinking about something else earlier today, and this fits it. This fits it. You got to love. You got to love this kind of move. This is, it's just loverly. It's just amazing. It, it's amazing. It's, ama it's amazing, this next move. You don't find moves like this uh, <laughs> at your everyday Tata Steel. You win tournaments by making moves like this. This is the kind of move somebody, who would make a move like this? Petrosian. Petrosian would find this next move. Okay, just deep, just deep. Chipotle Sensei, yo, what's up, what's up? In the building, Batcave Joe also in the building. Juggernaut here as well. I see some of my usuals. Jim Stir in the building as well. Well, this move you guys are gonna like. I mean, this is, a, this is just straight dirty. Straight dirty what's gonna happen next. Kajuru, thanks for the subscription. Straight dirty, what's going to happen next? The winning move, you ready for this? King to h8. 
Slide to the right. Slide to the left. Crisscross. Crisscross. King to H8. King to H8. G7 is getting blown up. There's going to be tacticos along the long diagonal. And the king says, I don't care. Pure D gangster. I'm going in the corner and I'm going to live to tell the tale. Pure D gangster move, y'all. That's a move you want to see happen on a chair. Like, what? Serious? Well, let's look at the main line because knight takes is not possible because the rook is hanging, and in which case the knight's going to hang next. But what about rook takes? The rook, I mean, the knight's defending the rook. This knight's defending this one. This pawn's defending the knight. I mean, we got a nice chain. Look at the chain. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Up. We got a nice chain. What's the problem? Until, black, different ways to spank here, by the way. But until you see the move, C5 land on the board. And the chain, <laughs> Nimzovic style, hit him at the base. Except Nimzovic is talking about pawn structures. Hit him at the base of the chain. This knight guards, this knight that guards. Let me do that again. This knight guards, this knight that guards that rook. Let's take out Joey. Let's take out Joey. What you going to do? The whole chain. And now you could look at this position and be scared. Look, queen h7 is mate. How do you get the knight out the way? If you move the knight, the rook hangs. <laughs> How do you get the knight out of the way? You move the knight to rook. And like, how do you do it? How do you do it? How do you do it? Okay. This is, by the way, butt shaper, like your name. Remove the defender. This is not removing the defender. That's the defender. It's removing the defender squared. Okay. We're removing the defender to the defender. What kind of thing? We're removing the defender to the defender of the defender. Okay, I took it one, minute, one, one too much. I admit, my bad. Okay, at any rate, this guy's defending, this guy's defending, this guy. So let's get rid of this guy so that this guy can drop and this guy's going to be scared. <laughs> I mean, whoa. A witty whoa. Witty what? Whoa. The position got crazy. Now, I am sure Fabi looked at this position. I'm sure he looked at it and said, I don't know. My king looks really strange. My king, my king looks really strange. All right. I, I don't know. And he probably looked at this tactic. Because the whole king side just got shredded. I don't know. Is it, I don't know. If I take this, I did win some food. Now we're threatening the defender who's defending two of them. I don't know. What if he buys knight take knight to d6? Uh, the defender is not becoming an offender. <laughs> That's a mating idea, by the way. And the queen will have to take. And we got a little queen eight seven Matutsky action. Fabi probably was sitting on this position and went like, oh, damn, what's happening? But you got to be a gang. So you want to be a gangster. Yo, take, give. What just happened? This thing freaked itself out. Let's come back. Let's come back. Mishikov, thanks for the love, as always. All right? So now, Fabi, and as we know, he was in time pressure. He's got to figure this out, make sure this doesn't hurt, and this position. But when you look, you go, damn, I got a lot of pieces. <laughs> uh, I got a lot of pieces. This queen by itself can't harm this thing, and there's no check somewhere, funny business, anything this nice, ready to cover up and do to do, and hey! See, that's a lot of pieces. You normally only need three, but now you get four. That's a lot of pieces. Uh, this is this is gonna hurt. Fabulous, Fabi had the chance of the chance of the chance, and could have been tied for first if he had found this move c five, but didn't do it. Rex Murphy, thanks for the subscription. Did not do it. Instead, in time pressure, play g six. And the youngster, you, maybe Ali Reza plays, plays poker because the bluff worked. The bluff worked. Give me the pawn and let me slide back to where I came from. Got the pawn. Thank you very much. Now, the position is still shaky a little bit. I mean, this knight is in here. I know it's defended. I know it can come back home. But it's not like white pieces are well coordinated. But it's not like black is doing anything either. So, the knight went to f4. Another strange move. Again, 
Moves like C5 were, were called for. Thank you. And Papa Jokester with gifts, dropping it. Amazing. Socrates also with gifts. Thank you so much. You guys are always on my side. I appreciate it very much. No question about it. Thank you. Thank you. I see the gifts are just ringing up the place. Thank you very much, y'all. Much appreciated. Knight to F4. Panic time indeed. And the knight came back home. I got me a Pieska. I got me a pawn, he said. I got me a pawn. Can I consolidate? Let me trade off. Let me drop another check on him. Let me grab. I think I'm getting me a second one. I think I, I might have Fabi down. Fabi must have just been like, Fabi went from killing the guy, two different ways possible. Okay, the first one wasn't killing, the second one was, to what? <laughs> I could lose? I could see my tournament go up in smoke? Just poof, gone. But 28 hundreds have a way of fighting hard. They don't get to 2,800 because they don't know how to defend and because they don't have heart. So now, I mean, Ali Reza is going to be like this. How did he get away? How did he get away? Well, first of all, first things first, don't take with the queen. I mean, you can if you want to. I mean, if you just want to get served, okay? If you want to get served, that's, you could do that. But if you have to take with the rook, then queen takes g4. Okay, it's only one pawn. It's only one. It's only one. But... What's up with this king? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, it's two against one on this side. It's going to be technically a little tricky. But guys like Capablanca, Karpov, Bavinik, Petrosian, Fisher, Kromnik, uh, Carlson, you would be served in this position. You're going down. That's not maybe. You're going down against those guys. You're a great defender. Congratulations. You're going down. But Ali Reza still needs that, that Magnus touch. The Magnus touch in order to take down the top guns like a Fabiano Caruana. Queen draw back. Now C4. Looks reasonable. Grabbing the diagonal. Getting ready to maybe potentially put some pressure on this pawn. Although for the moment it's defended. But gives up a square. And Fabi said, I'm going right there. And I'm going to cover. Oh, by the way, I'm threatening a Matutsky. Rook to d3. c5. It's not the number of pawns you have in an endgame. It's the quality. The quality of the pawns. So, this looks like a move. Hey, we're up a pawn. Let's trade. Let's go into an ending. Uh, these pawns suck. Thank you very much. And this king is more active Guess who's getting served now? It's all black in this position. Now you're being served. So Fabi with that art of defense. Art of defense when you're in trouble. Go ahead. You want to trade? I know you do. Go ahead. I dare you. Okay, I won't trade. Rook G3. Okay, now that the rook is ensconced on the D4 square, planted, I got some counterplay. Second pawn. Got it. Stole it. Two pawns now. Check. Check. Another check. You want to win? Try to win. I know you want to win. Uh-oh. Did you see this tactic? And suddenly, F2 is hanging. Uh, F3 with H1 mate might be hanging. Queen B1 might be hanging. Counter spagagle all day long. This is how you... Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Fabi's like... He's like Allen Iverson. This way, that way, oh, that crossover behind the back. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Step back. Whoop. Come on now. Nasty. All those queen maneuvers. Allowing a check. Allowing queen takes b7 with check. How deep is this? Three pawns. The guy calculated to losing three pawns with check. And now it's even. I mean, when I think about having to play guys like this, like, geez, I'll never be able to play against them. This, this is ridiculous. Why is this good? Rook back to d7, hitting the queen and hitting f2. And now if you play queen back to g2, rook down, shut it down, shut it down. 
this pawn is toast. You better go back to b7. I mean, you could, you know, draw back if you want to. And now, check. Don't put your queen back. We'll take you. We'll take it. Now you got to go back after this check to h2. And now we just play queen back to f5. And you have been served. You have been served. Extraordinary. Extraordinario. This is a possible move. But guess what's going to happen? Check. Just, just amazing. The combinations you saw with this defensive combination is just amazing. The art of defense. I mean, we could go into a whole six weeks talking about the art of defense to save yourself in chess. I mean, incredible. Harry Popper's, why not king, king to G7? I mean, that just shows you the depth, the depth. You feel me? King to G7. Well, I'm sorry to, to report <laughs> that that is mate. So you don't want to do that. That's the instinctive move. That's probably what Ali Reza thought was going to happen. I doubt it, though. I'm sure he saw right here when he played this check that that wasn't going to happen. But this and this. I'm going to tell you right now, this is 2,800, 2,900 defense. You're down three pawns. You calculate all this to your king being exposed on, G7, on the E7 square, realizing that this piece is inactive and also realizing that you're going to get counterplay with this move. Beauteousness. Beautiful. If you're going to give double, triple exclamation marks to queen sacrifices and zwischenjugs and zugzwang ideas, you got to give it to the art of defense that Fabi played here. Ab absolutely just absolutely brilliant defense queen h1 give me back one pawn queen g2 uh your rook sucks and mine are Artibo. takes forced two pawns back in the pocket and this a pawn is going nowhere rook h5 what if queen goes to b3 after rook after what Rook D1 goes to B3 after Rook to D1. Which move are you talking about? I'm not sure which position. Thank you, Rapsagnomis. What up? What up? Uh, I'm not sure which position you're talking about. Rook to D1. Let me see if I can back up to some position that you're referring to. That's not it. Hmm. Hmm. Queen to D3. Yeah, it was long ago. Yeah, I, I don't see it. I don't see what y'all want. So we're just going to keep it going. Rook to A2 and takes. And Fabi draws positions like this in his sleep. In his sleep. Fabi could wake up out of bed and draw this position. Thank you, Henry John. Fabi be like, yo, Fabi. All right, play this position. Oh, come on, please. <laughs> like, literally. Not, not even, not even, not, he could be half asleep like that. Uh, Fabi, why? Why? Leave me alone. Uh, the position is king on e7, pawn on f7, rook on a4 for black, rook on c5, pawn on, c, on c4, king on g2, and pawn on g3 for white. Pawn on g3. Pawn on g3. Okay, what? Uh, what about it? Uh, it's black to move. It's a draw, man. Leave me alone. Get away. Bug off. But you're down a pawn. Get the hell out of here, man. I'm not drawing this in my... I'm trying to dream. I was having a good dream right now. Why you... Just leave me alone. This is easy. Okay? That's how he does it. <laughs> That's how Fabi would do it. No problem. First of all, active king. Move your rook. Ooh, looks like the rook is strong. Eh. Too good. The guy's too good. Active. Check's coming. King has no future... Come on, shut it down. Now the rook's going to get behind the pawn. Behind the pawn. What do you got? And uh, the young G said, you know what? I had enough. You got me. I had enough. I had enough. Now, a lot of us would have played some more moves, like try this one. Where are you going? Your king's not going nowhere. Your, king, your, rook, your rook can't move back because that's hanging. That's how 2,800 players shut down 2,700 players, even when they had good positions, all right? But I got to say, Fabi did get in trouble in this game, messed it up, 
had to had to put the pull the rabbit literally. There's the hat, and he he's on stage. Where'd the rabbit go? Damn! Oh, there it is. Woo! <laughs> Magic to save this game. Magic to settle this down and keep young Ali Reza. I'm gonna tell you right now, Ali Reza. I mean, it's late wherever he is right now in the world. I mean, wherever he is, he, he, he's in the Netherlands. Duh. Uh, in in Vicenza. He's sitting there right now in a hotel room in Vicenza going, probably can't even sleep. I know it's late. He may be asleep. He may not. He may be sitting there like, I could have beat this guy. I can't believe it. I mean, dear, time for first. I can't believe it. I mean, I'll be off the hook. What I got to do to beat these 2,800? You understand? That's, that's what's going on. That's what's going on. It's 1 a.m. It can't be 1 a.m. It's, it's, uh, it is 1 a.m. You're right. So he's not sleeping. He is not sleeping. 1 a.m. Chess players don't go to bed at 1 a.m. Not you play in a tournament and you got to play later in the day. Uh-uh. He's not sleeping. He might be watching the stream. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah says, he might be watching the stream. Well, Ali Reza, I know. you. I know. If you're watching, I know you're going, damn, why you got to show my game like this for, man? I had him. I had him. I had him. Mm. Do it next time, young G. Do it next time. Do it next time. You're close. You're close. You're getting there.